Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be tearing down this Modify Complete Mech box. I'm just going to go through some of the internals, things I like about this box, and things I don't like about the box. So stay tuned for that. Alright, so uh, basically I've got the screws taken out of the mech box already. I'm going to take it down a little bit, but I want to go into just what I can see from the outside. Um, I'm going to go into a couple of things that I like and sort of don't like about the outside right, right off the bat. Um, I like the fact that it's reinforced right here at the front. Uh, they have that on both sides, obviously. Um, they've made this area thicker, but at the same time, that you need a you need a proprietary tapper plate to run this. And also, uh, they sort of gone a little bit overboard with the reinforcement. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's actually quite a bit um, sticking out of where the where the normal contour of the mech box would typically be. Uh, basically, the reason why I don't like this is because it doesn't really work with uh, at least three of the different metal bodies I tried. I tried VFC, King Arms, and GNP. Uh, GNP sort of works, you can kind of kind of get it on there. Uh, basically what I mean is when you drop the, uh, the, low the mech box into the lower receiver, you try to slide the upper receiver on. Um, can't really do it. You can actually already see where sort of uh, some of the paint is sort of rubbed away a little bit. Um, Two things you can do, you can either kind of grind this down to sort of make it work, or you can modify your receiver, which, um, well, the first option doesn't really, doesn't really make sense because that kind of defeats the whole reinforcement, and the second thing kind of sucks because now you have to modify your receiver. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's reinforced, so it's kind of nice, but I feel like they could have, you know, done away, uh, done with a little bit less. Uh, moving on, they've sort of done this weird pattern here at the back. I don't know if it's for A, to lighten it, lighten it, these are like kind of lightning cuts, or B, it's just to make it look cooler or to increase strength or whatever, but um, I don't know why they want to increase strength because it's not load-bearing along this surface here, so um, well, it looks kind of neat, I guess. Um, next thing is, you see these cutouts here, it's kind of nice to have. Uh, you can kind of look in and see the health of your gears without having to open up your mech box. You can even apply, reapply grease if you need to. Uh, they've done this cutout here where the tapper plate usually goes, and you can kind of see the tapper plate and also see like the condition of the, your piston teeth without opening the mech box, so it's pretty pretty nice to have. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to go into now is the high performance, low resistance wiring. It's your typical sort of airsoft wire. Um, high strand count, uh, I think it's silver coated. Uh, but the biggest beef I have with this kind of wiring is the uh, the insulation. It just, it just tears really easily. Uh, I wonder if you guys can see here, but it's already started to kind of tear where it was sort of rubbing against the receiver. Um, which is not good because uh, it can just basically cause a failure right there uh, not to go back and, uh, and shrink wrap that um, The insulation could be a bit better, um, but I mean the quality of the wire is not bad. So um, They've definitely you know gone in the right direction um, Next thing is they have sort of included this anti-reversal latch. Uh, this is sort of unique to modify. They had this uh, without you know basically what, I, what we used to have to do was kind of stick something uh, like a small hook object into the bottom here hook the anti-reversal latch and then pull it to release the tension so when you open up the mech box you know your spring guide and all that and your gears don't go flying uh, what they've done is they've actually just cut a slot in the anti-reversal latch so you can kind of get, get a small uh, flathead in there twist it and it'll reverse it'll open up the anti-reversal latch and allow the piston kind of uh, go forward and, and relieve the tension in the mech box kind of neat um, I'm going to go into that a little bit later once I have it uh, out last thing uh, that I can see off the from the outside is is this uh, this support structure here. Uh, this is modified smooth gear set. It's basically like their shimless gear set and it comes in a, as, a, as a complete as a complete one piece unit. Uh, all three gears are, are all together but uh, I'll show you guys when I open that up. So uh, let me just go ahead and open that up and uh, we'll be right back. Okay so basically I have the mech box open now. Um, first things first I want to point out that they use this weird Torx head. Uh, this Torx screw. It's a coarse thread which is nice but it's a Torx head. Um, I don't know why they decided to change it up versus using the sort of the industry standard two mil metric. Uh, presumably, I guess, is because people strip their heads all the time, but uh, I mean, it is sort of an industry standard. So I guess if you lose one of these screws, uh, or a few of them, you're hosed. You kind of either have to go and get go to modify to get them or whatnot. Also, you can't get a standard one either because the threads don't go all the way through. They kind of stop like halfway. I mean, not halfway, they kind of stop a little bit. I mean, you know, so, anyway, um, next, standard ball bearing spring guide, pretty standard, uh, basically every mech box has these now, so nothing too special, spring, nothing much to say about that, um, the cylinder headset, uh, let's go take a look at the piston, this is, uh, I think, modifies ultra piston, um, 
design very similar to Lonix's uh, Extreme Toughness piston. It's got seven metal teeth. Uh, structurally, it's very similar. It's got the little cutouts uh, to kind of reduce the weight. The left, the, I mean, with all sort of aftermarket pistons, piston heads, they have the bearing piston head. So I'm going to be taking that out to take the weight off. Um, Material-wise, it's it's sort of a more polycarbonate. It's like a very thick wall polycarbonate. Uh, these are, this is a brand new piston, so I can't really report on how much wear there is, but it seems to be not too bad. Um, so anyway, uh, cylinder. It's a standard aluminum cylinder with a hole, with a port. Um, not too sure why the. I mean, there's aluminum versus brass or stainless steel or or whatever. But like, aluminum is nice because it cuts the weight down on the mech box. However. I don't know why I decided to go with these weird ridges, um, these ribs, whatever you want to call them. Um, I guess they want to tell you that it t it's heat dissipating or whatever, but I mean, anyone tells you that's basically it's a load of shit because you're not going to be generating enough heat in there anyway. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this, uh, the ribs because basically what happens is if you're trying to get the, trying to slide the upper receiver on, what's going to happen is it might catch on these ribs or and then aluminum also sort of like, it's sort of dense really easily as well. So another reason why I'm not a huge fan of aluminum. Aluminum, uh, Standard uh, double O-ring uh, cylinder head. Uh, I went ahead and uh, put a servo pad on there. The stock rubber pad, I just popped right off. It was about half the thickness of that. So AOE wasn't fantastic. Um, it was sort of, yeah, it wasn't great. You, ha you basically have to put a spacer or a servo pad in there to correct it. Otherwise, you're going to kiss goodbye to your piston after about, you know, a few thousand rounds or whatever. Um, anyway, moving on, standard O-ring nozzle, pretty standard, uh, and this is the tappet plate, so they had to do these, I guess, they had to do some of the cutouts, I think, here, you see, um, it's a bit different from Lonex, but they did these cutouts here, which you'll have to replicate if you break this one, uh, to prepare tappet plates aren't actually that big of a deal, I mean, it takes about two seconds to cut these holes in the, in the tappet plate, uh, material's pretty good, it's a bit fle more flexible than I'd like, but, uh, Anyway, not too bad. I'm not sure why they decided to go with this weird clear polycarbonate, but... Um, gears. This is a modified torque 21.6 to 1 gear ratio. Um, not a huge fan of the gear ratio because basically everyone should be running high torque motors or 11.1 .1 LiPo, so putting a torque gear set really only means that you're going to be slowing your rate of fire down. Um, but other than that, it's not, it's not horrible, I guess. Uh, however, if you use this gear set, they force you to use this, these proprietary bear, uh, bushings uh, that you'll have to punch out if you want to switch up the gears or anything like that. These are not compatible with any other gear set out in the market, so you're pretty much stuck with them. Um, can't really speak too much on the gears, the gear uh, strength of the gears because this is a brand new box, but they came with like little to no grease. I actually had to grease them up myself. Um, they do spin like pretty good. I mean, as you expect them to, I guess. Uh, actually, they don't spin that good. They're okay. But um, the shimming, obviously, I mean, I would expect at the very least to be pretty good. However, you see there's a bit of gear slop, which is kind of weird. I mean, if, if you're going to go into the trouble of making a complete gear set, at least make it, you know, with less slop. I mean, that's quite a bit of room between the two, right? You want to try to bring it as close as possible. Uh, which brings me to my next point. The biggest beef I have with this gear set is that if you're trying to basically shim your mech box uh, pinion to bevel, you're not going to be able to do it because there's no way for you to elevate this gear set above the bushings. So it's going to basically rely on once you push your motor pinion gear in, it's going to push the entire gear set up or down. Um, and maybe sometimes you might have enough clearance, so you kind of hose there. Um, I see where they're going with this idea, but it's a you know it's it's, it's good idea and design, but flawed in execution as you can see. There's play here. Uh, there's play on this gear as well, and also on this one. Uh, well, not so much on the on the uh, bevel gear, I guess. But anyway, um, this interface is fine. So, so this one right here is is okay. Only thing is, this one's like, you know, look, look let's check out that space. It's pretty big. So, I'd rid of, get rid of that slop for sure. Um, anyway, last thing I want to talk about is the anti reversal latch. Pretty neat. They put in this like little washer here that basically keeps the spring from flying out, so you don't lose that spring. Um, and also, like I said, it has that slot cut into it, so you can release the tension in the uh, in, in this in the uh, in the gears, and so you can you know take the spring out without exploding your mech box out the back. All right, so that's it for the modified box. I'm gonna be putting this back together, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.